Welcome back everyone. We're going to be working on the next part of the receipt project. We're actually now going to actually make it a real object. So we're going to start with some uh, variables for, for it. So we're going to start out with private string and then the variable name. Private just means that no other class can access and modify the variable. String is just the data type that it is and since we're in Java we have to do that. And then we're just going to add this variable name, which in this case will be store name, cashier name, greeting, and so on as we go down. This will uh, allow us to have the variable, but it will just not be set yet. And so we'll be able to set those later in what we're going to call a constructor. Uh, and that is what every pro object has by default, but when you actually explicitly write out what a constructor is, then you get to have some versatility in what it actually will do and how it is implemented. So as we're going to go through, we're going to add these different variables. Now, we want to have a list for the actual groceries. This can be a really small list. It could, have, it could be something that has one, or it could have many, 100, multiple. So we're actually going to create a, create a type list, which is actually a very vague term in the Java world. Uh, so the idea is that of this is when you initially uh, instantiate the or, or describe the variable, you want to be as vague as possible. And then we can actually uh, drill down further into what type of list it is. Now, if you notice here, there's two different where places uh, that we can import this from, either the awt or the .util. And so we're actually going to do the .util because that's what that's the library that comes for data uh, storage. The AWT has to do with some front end stuff with GUI, uh, graphic user interface, and we will get into that in some future projects. But for today, we're just going to stick with the .util and we're going to uh, leave that there. So again, none of this stuff actually is going to have any data in it until we set it. And so this will make it global for the whole class to, to be able to access through any of our uh, methods as we go through. So we will make it the double type because it's going to be, have a decimal in it. Uh, there are some different type of types of data types that we could use uh, for this project. We're just going to use a double for now. Now we're going to kind of skip over that subtotal one and we're going to a subtotal and total, and we're going to go to the payment type. Uh, so this one we're actually going to make a string. So now we're going to be working on creating the constructor. So what a constructor does is whenever you create an instance of, in this instance, a receipt, then it needs to know what kind of information is it going to be given and what does it need to do with all of that. So you could by, uh, at this point, if we wanted to call it, it would just have an empty brackets, uh, and it would create it. But it really wouldn't do anything for us. It wouldn't set anything. It wouldn't print out anything. So in this case, we're going to create the constructor. Now, if you notice, we, it has to be public, and we have to name it the same as the class. An empty, uh, an empty constructor. So we're going to go through and we can add in the parameters. So we have a string of store name. We can also add in the string cashier name. Now I can go through and I can type all these out and there's only a few so it's not unfeasible for me to do this. However, there's a really cool feature with Eclipse that you can actually create, it will create it for you. So we're just going to delete this real quick, and we're going to go to Edit, and go to Generate Constructor Using Fields. Now you can see all of the different fields that are available. Make sure they're all clicked, and we're going to generate it. Now for a second, I thought it went away. Uh, but what you can see when we open this back up, it shows Insert Point, Insert Point After Main, so if you just go to the bottom, then there it is. 
So make sure that you just know where that is and you can always move it around. I like that to be the first method in my program. So that's why I move it there. Super has to do with some stuff we're not going to get into today. So you can just remove that. And so now what it says is it said this dot store name equals store name, which is really cool. So now it's saying set the global variable of store name with the method variable store name. And that's where you see the different colors as well, the blue and the brown. I don't typically like to have the same name except for this feature of the constructor because then it gives you a nice one-to-one -one of where things need to go. So now we're going to remove our print line statements from the main method and we're going to put it into the constructor. But before we actually start replacing the, them with the variables, the lines with the variables in it, we are going to create an instance of our class receipt. So you start by this by the type of object, which it is of type receipt. And then we're going to name it. And for now, we're going to call it R1. And then because we're creating a new one, you have to use the reserved word new receipt. And you can see that gives us a red line. And it shows that, hey, we don't have a constructor of the signature that you're trying to use. So we are now going to insert all of that data into the place that we're going to create the instance of it. So that first parameter was the store name. So we're going to do that there. The second one was the cashier. Third was the greeting. Now it's going to get a little bit trickier. We are going to have to pass in a list. So now is when we're going to get a little bit more granular in the kind of list that we have. So we will be creating an array list. And what an array list does is it is a full on object. It's not a primitive uh, data type such as char or int or double. So it will allow us to have the array grow in size, whereas array is a primitive uh, data type. And so it won't grow. You have to, whatever size you said it originally is the size it has to be. So array list, again, name it. We're creating a new instance of it. So then we have the new reserved word. Now that we have an empty list, it doesn't matter how big it is, it's empty, so we can add that in and everything is happy with us. So the next one is going to be the tax. And here we have it as a string, so we're actually going to add it into this instance as just a number. This will be needed later when we add the calculation functionality. Again, skipping that subtotal and total for now. And then we're going to pop in cash as the payment type. So now if we run it, it's going to print out. But nothing's really changed because it's just printing out from the constructor. And since we are calling it, then it's going to create it. Now we've coming all those out. It's not going to print anything out because there's nothing there to tell it to print anything out. So now whenever we run that, all that's doing is just setting all of those variables and then ending because that's all it knows to do. So now we can go in and replace all of those lines with the actual variable names. We're going to skip over the subtotals and the grocery list for now. And we will deal with that in, a, in the next video of how to get all of that to print out the way we want it to. And then we'll pop in the tax rate and the payment. So now it's only going to print out whatever we put in there. And this is where another program can call it and add in that information. Thank you guys and 
we will continue on this in the next video.